Welcome back to one night. I have to step up to them. Okay, I win. I don't know. Serves your Chio's elder brother. Hey, boy. What happened was nothing short of a tragedy. I can only imagine your pain. So, yeah, boy, Give all the time you need to recover. Forgetting me. In the go. to this if I hadn't lost sight of my purpose in life, putting myself on the line for another. If I'd been able to live the way she did, then even I could have had a purpose. But I gave in to my fears and ran away. In the end, I couldn't achieve anything. I thought faking it would be enough, but I couldn't even do that much. friend who I really respected. I always wanted to be like her. But I was a coward. Weak. I had no purpose, no value in life. If I were anything like her, I would have been able to devote myself to others like she did. Maybe then my life would have held meaning. Maybe then my life would have had some hope. I've always been the cowardly Nozomi. I could never hope to become a saint like her. Hmm. So 
sorry. I know you don't care about any of this. I just wanted to give you a proper apology. That's why I let you in. I know what I did can't be forgiven. You should just forget about me. Well... <laughs> the damsel drowns in a deluge of despair! And yet, if you wish to be entangled in Nozomi's fate, if you wish to step into her heart, then find your determination. Bring your ego to bear. The road of fate thins like a waning tide. There won't be much room to walk by your side. Oh, okay. <laughs> Wait, isn't that like Good one. I know Zomi. The coward. The loser. What makes you think I can help you at all? Allah. <laughs> no. I can't help you. Even calling me a fake is generous. You have more important people to deal with. Just forget about me. <laughs> What's that supposed to mean? I have no hope. I'm a lost cause. 
Even living life as a fake can't give me what I want anymore. Huh. I've always admired, but I ran, and then Chio died, and it's all my fault. Fearful faker. Like attracts like, it seems. Is that. Vanitas? Indeed! If you don't want what befell Chio to repeat, then the distortions must be dealt with. Too sweet. Miss Sora said that the distortions in the Academy are what pulled Chio into the other world. After the incident, the student council collected everyone's phones. But if these distortions are getting this bad, isn't it possible that some other incident might happen? Precisely! Distortions do not disappear. The danger remains while the barrier's here. But if the barrier is lifted, then anyone with an authority could spread the distortions beyond the Academy gates. They would go to the outside world instead, condemning many to similar fates. I don't think you and Miss Sora would do anything to spread the distortions. But I can't necessarily say the same about Kokoro and Ryotaro. We'd better go and talk with them. You plan on punishing the Pact Bearers, I presume? That would be a tragedy all on its own. And we've had more than enough of them. For his sake, I'd lay down my life. And besides, if Chio was still with us, she wouldn't want us to hurt each other. I'll find a way to end all of this peacefully. Act two! Nozomi Hinata! Shield. Yeah! Yeah, why? Shinya. Long time no see, Madam President. Same to you. Could I ask you to come to the Dean's office? Dr. Nako told us you'd regain consciousness. Sora wants a word with you. 
You can come too, Madam President. I'll just be going now. Vice President, if it weren't for you, I never would have found my second wind. I would have just kept moping around. Hold up. Now what? to Miss Aikawa was truly unfortunate. <sighs> I was going to begin by explaining the tragedy that befell her. However... <laughs> it would seem you were already aware. That being the case, I believe you understand. Should we wish to avoid further tragedy, we cannot afford to overlook any pact bearer or authority that may pose a threat. I'm sure you all feel the same, so I'd appreciate if you would cooperate. Cooperate? <laughs> cooperate how? How do you intend to resolve all of this, Miss Sora? By having you assist us in getting rid of the Pact Bears, of course. Including you. Why? Shinya and I are about to head over to Mr. Date's location. Oh. It is most regrettable, but... He appears unwilling to part with his authority. Oh. I thought I'd go and... persuade him myself. Though I would much prefer that he were as understanding as Miss Sarugadai. Has Kokoro already agreed to relinquish her authority? No. Huh? She intended to at first, but had a change of heart after Miss Aikawa passed. It's a shame, but at least the decision she made won't result in more distortions. I've decided to respect her will, tragic as it may be. <sighs> Miss Sarugadai has chosen an alternative option to remain a pact bearer in the other world. What? She has decided to reside in the other world. She has sworn never to return to this realm. Is that... really okay? Why, yes. I've restricted Miss Sarugadai's movements with my Esso Kinesis. So long as she remains a Pact Bearer, she cannot leave the other world. Dangerous as she may be, there's no need to fear her return. No, that's not what I meant. Is Kokoro going to be okay? Ah. The other world is a metaphysical plane, so there's no need for physical sustenance. As long as her mind remains hale and hearty, she should be fine. Though it's questionable whether someone who wishes to isolate themselves in the other world could be regarded as hale and hearty. No way. Tragedy truly loves company, doesn't it? Now then, Shinya and I will be heading to Mr. Date. Let us speak again after Mr. Date has been persuaded. By then, you will be the only Pact Bearer remaining in this realm. Oh. <sighs> <laughs> 
Yes. Forfeiting your own life like this is never the right choice. <laughs> she can't leave the other world while under her pact. You'll have to void it to bring her back. In short, you must shatter her ideals. Recall when the two of you first met. You should know from then where her mist is set. We'll stop it this time. We won't let tragedy Fine. repeat itself. Fine. I risk my life for hope and to be the best I can be. Oh. In the I can see the mist, but it seems mild compared to the old dormitory. It makes sense. Kokoro was careful not to use her power in the academy. Let's hurry and find that call to the other world. Seems this place too is linked to the depths. This number connects to the singularity. Where's my thanks for all my charity?
it. do it. Bye. <laughs> 
You're in critical condition. We need to get you examined. You should be fine now. Here's your medicine. Don't do anything so reckless again, all right? Kokoro's ideal? It seems yeah. so... Yeah. I'm sorry. I don't want to hurt you, Kokoro. I don't want to shatter your desires, or your heart. But I can't let you shut yourself away in this lonely place. Let's go. I'll protect you with my life. I promise. Thank you. Die already! 
diesen Tipp. Understand. How can I avoid hurting others? How can I avoid being hurt by others? If I truly understood people, if people truly understood me, our lives would be happy and peaceful. Our lives would be safe and secure. But the thing is, I'm different. What is normal to me isn't normal to everyone else. I am not like other people. And because of that, my mother, my father, my friends and teachers, everyone, I hurt them unintentionally. I make them upset. They find me unpleasant. Their disdain hurts me back. I cannot understand the hearts of others. I most likely never will. But at the very least, I want to know how can I avoid hurting others? How can I avoid being hurt by others? I 
don't know. That was Kokoro's will. She doesn't want to hurt anyone, or for anyone else to hurt her. You're right. She's always talking about safety and security. Her will is a compassionate one, but it's heartbreaking to listen to. She's been tormenting herself over this the entire time. Kokoro is wonderful just the way she is. I've always felt comfortable around her. But I guess it's not about how I feel. If it weren't for you, I never would have found my second wind. I would have just kept moping around. Hold up in this room. I wouldn't have been able to move forward. I'm glad you were the one who got me to open up. Vice President, if it weren't for you, I never would have found my second wind. I would have just kept moping around. Hold up in this room. I wouldn't... I was beside myself after the incident with Chio. I avoided everyone and lost myself in my thoughts. But then you gave me a reason to keep moving forward. Kokoro's thoughts must be haunting her too. Maybe that's why she locked herself away in the other world. After finding that ideal, I feel like I understand her kindness and insecurity more than ever. <laughs> hey, mind if I tell you an old story of mine? It's important to me that you know what kind of person oh. I really am. Thank you. I had a childhood friend. Her name was Hikari. When I was little, I was scared of everything. More than now, even. It took all I had to keep myself together. Hikari was the exact opposite. She wasn't shy at all. She was charismatic and clever and strong and kind and caring. I latched on to her. I was always following her around like her shadow. And because of that, the boys in elementary school always made fun of me. They called me a scaredy cat and a crybaby. One day, on my way home from school, one of them grabbed my school bag and hid it in a park people said was haunted. It was the dead of winter, and the sun had already set. The park was pitch black. I was upset and too afraid to get it myself. So I clung to Hikari, crying and quivering. All I could do was sit myself down on a park bench and sob. Hikari couldn't bear seeing me that way. She told me to wait there, and then disappeared into the bushes to look for my bag. I waited for hours, and it got darker and darker. The silence was deafening. But more than anything else, I was scared Hikari wouldn't come back at all. So I called for help. My parents, Hikari's parents, the police, all sorts of people came with bright flashlights, searching for Hikari. The light cutting through the darkness, the voices cutting through the silence, I remember it all. 
It got so late. They were about to send me home. I thought I'd never see Hikari again. But suddenly, I heard her mom scream. Everything after that is a blur. I just stood there, catatonic, unable to even cry. I remember adults panicking, Hikari's mom gripping me by the shirt, crying, screaming, the ambulance carrying Hikari away. Hikari was dead. Some psycho in the park, the supposed ghost, was responsible. Remember what Yusuke said? That I just stood by while my best friend was killed? That's what he was talking about. Hikari wouldn't have died if it weren't for me. My cowardice and weakness caused the death of someone dear to me. It should have been me. I hated myself for it. So did her parents. I truly believed I deserved it. I still do. It wasn't fair. What kind of world lets a scaredy cat crybaby like me live? While well, Hikari has to die. Even if it was all a facade. If I lived for others like she did, and ended up dying for someone more important than me, then I'd be able to atone for what happened. I know how messed up all of this sounds, but it's the truth. It's the only way I can have any hope at all. Thank you for hearing me out. All right. Let's head to the library whenever you're ready. Seems this place too is linked to the depths. This number connects to the singularity. Where's my thanks for all my charity? here. Let's go. Let's go. 
bonus, homie. It's for you. Oh, 
jealous. I've got you! I'll protect you! Enemy down! Allow me! Supporting! Hot, isn't it? How do you support? Me too! Supporting! Looks tasty. It is done! So jealous. Good job, Nozomi. I'm glad I could protect you. Tell me the answer. I don't understand the hearts of others. I don't want to make any more mistakes. I don't want to hurt anyone else. I don't want anyone else to hurt me. Life is a difficult thing, full of pain, sadness, hardship, regret. I wish, from the bottom of my heart, for a future where I can smile, for a life of happiness and joy. For someone as strange and different as me to understand how other people think. I want a power that will tell me the answer. The answer to understanding the hearts of others. To achieving the future I desire. This is the reason she wanted the power of precog analysis. So she wouldn't hurt. Or be hurt. I understand why she'd make a wish like that. The motives behind her authority are pure. But the path of least hurt isn't always the best one. There's a gentle pain in protecting the people we care about. Kokoro, the path you've chosen will only end in more pain. I can't just let you take it. I don't want you to hurt anymore. But I have to do what I think is right. Wind. I would have just kept moping around. 
hold up in this room. I would Thank you. Um. You accepted oh, wow. me for who I am. You gave oh, me a reason to go on. That's how I'm able to help you stop Kokoro. How I'm able to keep moving forward and protect you. Had I kept moping the way I did, I'd have just let history repeat itself. Hey. Why did you accept me for who I am? I've never told anyone that story before. I didn't think you would take it so well. I figured you would reject me once you knew I was living a lie. That you'd tell me to drop the act and be true to myself. Or some other inspirational line. You're right. It is important to me. That's all that matters. Fake or real. Thank you for making me realize that. But in the end, I'm still pretending to be someone I'm not. Isn't that wrong? An ugly fraud like me will never be as good as the real thing anyway. The way I am, huh? So in other words, my attempts to impersonate Hikari. I suppose that means you acknowledge she lives on in me, at least. It does make me happy. After all, the whole reason fakes exist is to imitate the beauty of the real thing, right? trying to say is that it's good that I'm such a go-getter? It's strange. I feel a little less tense after hearing that. I'm stubborn, you know. My inferiority complex keeps me from understanding why anyone would accept me as I am. I know wanting to be her isn't normal, but I just can't stop myself from trying. Still, Deep down, I suppose I did want a part of me to be accepted for what it is. And I guess that part is being a go-getter. Fake or not, this is the way I've decided to live. I'll chase my dreams and do what I think is right. Thank you.
You should be fine now. Here's your medicine. Make sure you don't over... the way I've decided to live. Troubling. The barrier, as it turns out, isn't all we can do now is hope. This place, too, is the This number connects to the singularity. Where's my thanks? together, okay? For what reason? Didn't the Dean tell you? What? I want to be here, alone. Please, show yourself out. Why? Why? Heard, no. But I can't just let this happen. Why are you locking yourself away here? You never seemed that attached to your authority or your ideals. Affirmative. I have no interest in powers or ideals, nor the physical plane from which we originated. But I realized something. The only way to neither hurt nor be hurt is to be alone. That is the safest and securest way to live. Consequently, I decided not to relinquish my authority. You're confusing your means for your ends. What do you mean? I'm sorry. We found out when we shattered your ideals. Kokoro, the reason you don't want to hurt or be hurt is because you want to get along with everyone. Right? If only I knew how to make that a reality. I thought perhaps I could, were I to understand the hearts of other people. My wish was perfectly justified. But things are different now. I have finally decided to give up. A person's perception is unique to themselves. 
Language is a tool used to communicate perceptions to one another, but it's far from perfect. Words vary by the person. There is no way to understand someone completely. Since doing so is impossible, there is no way to avoid hurting others or being hurt yourself. Although we can't understand each other, we pretend we do. No one cares about the pain that results. It nauseates me. Only through isolation can one attain tranquility, safety, and security. It is possible to exist alone. Secluding oneself in a metaphysical plane like the other world is a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So please, do not interfere. Nah. Don't say that. We're gonna fight. I. We don't want to leave you here, Kokoro. You're right. When you're with others, it's inevitable that someone will get hurt. But not all wounds are bad. Some pains are kind and gentle. You got dog waiting. Are you going to avoid? We'll shatter your ideals and carry you back. By force, if we have to. I see. So that is why you are targeting my ideals. I have no other recourse than to defend myself. I cannot permit my ideals to be shattered. So you want to avoid? As well as to him. Oh, you do want to fight. I believe in safety and security, but my hand has been forced. Happiness cannot be won by an action. Ah, uh, well, you want to fight. Please have fight. Let's have some fun. Fine. Unacceptable. 
Jealousy. So jealous. Superficial phenomena. I see it. A fruitless outcome. Let's have some fun. To victory! I'll protect you. Hot, isn't it? Looks tasty. Isn't it? Let's 
tasty. Alone. This is how I became estranged from the world. When did Mother stop hugging me? When did everyone begin to distance themselves? My calculations led me to remember. I was happy when people praised me. I was happy when people patted my shoulder and said I did well. I came to love it more and more. That was when I realized I wasn't normal. Mother would apologize to me. You're special, Kokoro. I'm sorry you can't have an education that matches how special you are, but it didn't matter to me. I loved my home, my school, and my mother. Kokoro is special, but he is so painfully normal. 
Such words were used by others to hurt my friend. He was a good friend. I enjoyed being around him. It isn't as though I asked to be special. If the heart of another is hurt, my own heart is hurt as well. I hate that word. Special. I wish I were normal. I want to be like everyone else. I'm not as smart as everyone thinks I am. I'm not special. I'm just... strange. I don't understand. What can I do so that everyone treats me like a regular person? I don't understand. The loneliness. The sadness. How can I make it go away? I don't know. These are Kokoro's thoughts. A formative memory that led to her wish. We might not completely understand one another, but maybe that isn't so bad. Even if what we tell each other can't convey exactly what we feel. The effort of even trying to communicate those feelings is beautiful in and of itself. The warmth we share from coming together no matter how faint, it's gentle and irreplaceable. So don't be afraid of hurting us. Don't be afraid of getting hurt. Don't get used to being alone. We want you to live on with us, even if a part of you ends up lost. And then... What? You know what I'm talking about? What? Oh. Urshinya brings Ryotaro in. Now you guys and Kokoro. And just when Kurama and the others recovered, too. It's worrying. Really. Yes, I suppose it is. It'll be fine. Everyone else managed to recover. With a little rest, they will too. They might suffer a bit of memory loss though. Looking for you. She asked that you stop by her office alone. Nah, bro. None. Ah. They got done. That nigga's done.